Good morning, and welcome to Greater Rose of Sharon's Sunday morning service. Join us on Facebook Live at 10 a.m., and it will be repeated at 11 Sunday morning. Also, you can watch it in a rerun on YouTube at 6 p.m. So sit back, get your Bibles out, and join us for Sunday morning with Pastor Cedric Cross at the Rose. How great is our God, King me, how great is our God, oh she how great, how great.
Lord is blessing me right now. The 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 Lord is blessing me right now. He woke me up. Man, the song says, he woke me up this morning. And I don't know how you feel about it, but somebody actually think it's the alarm clock that woke him up. I don't know about you, but I've overslept a few times after the alarm went off. So it must not have been the alarm that woke you up. It must have been the Lord who woke us up and started us on our day. And that's something to think about. Out of, out of everything going on in the universe, God saw fit to allow us to see one more day. Uh, we don't know about tomorrow, but he woke us up today. And for that, we ought to be thankful. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. It is now time for our uh, altar call prayer. And those of you uh, who stand in the need of prayer, listen, God can hear all of our prayers at one time. Yes, sir. Uh, and we know we don't assemble around the altar, but we ask if you would, you can stand right where you are. Amen. As we approach the throne of grace. And listen, you know, we used to sing that little song back in the day. They say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord standing in the need of prayer and if there's one thing that I know is common to all people we all stand in the need of prayer yes, sir. we may not be going through the same thing but we all dealing with something yes, sir. but the great thing about the God that we serve is that he told us he said cast your care on him because he cares for us so whatever it is that you're dealing with on today, listen, have a little talk with Jesus because he will make everything all right. Amen. Let us bow. Eternal God, our Father, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we come before you this morning in the matchless name of Jesus, your Christ. First of all, Lord, we want to tell you thank you. We thank you, Lord, for last night's rest. And, Lord, right early this morning, you woke us up and started us on our way. And for that, Lord, we want to tell you thank you. And then, Master, we ask you for forgiveness of our sins and our shortcomings. For somewhere in word, thought, or deed, we have sinned against thee. And, Lord, we thank you uh, for being a forgiving God. And, Lord, we ask you right now, Lord, for forgiveness, Lord. 
And Father, as we have made our way to the sanctuary once again, Lord, we pray that the spirit of the living God would fall fresh in this place. Lord, we are pressing our way through some difficult times. But even in the midst of the storm and even in the midst of the trial, Lord, we have made our way to the house of prayer and we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Master, we pray right now in Jesus' name that you would be glorified in all that we do. Heavenly Father, I intercede right now for every person in this building and those who may be tuning in live. We pray right now, Father God, that you would touch the hearts of your people right now, Lord. Father God, even though we're saved, sometimes we, our faith is lacking. Sometimes we wonder which way to go. We haven't lost faith, but sometimes, Lord, we just, we just stand at a crossroads confused. So, Lord, we pray for clarity right now, Lord. We, we pray for inner peace right now, Lord. We, we pray that you would restore unto us the joy of our salvation, Lord. We, Lord, we pray for a spirit of praise and worship, Lord. Somebody wants to lift holy hands. Somebody wants to say hallelujah. Lord, we pray right now that you would just have your way in this place, Lord, because you have been good to us, and Lord, you have been kind. Then, Father God, we stand in the gap for those who have lost loved ones. Lord, just every day someone is born, and every day someone passes on. And Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that you would comfort bereaved families all over the land and country. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would uh, just be that leaning post, Father God, when, when it's hard to stand. We pray, God, that you would uh, lift up bowed down heads, and we pray that you would give peace right now, Father God. And Lord, we dare not forget those who are sick, those who are in hospitals, nursing homes, those who, those who may be uh, quarantining uh, in their own homes. Father, we pray right now, Lord, that you would touch, heal, and deliver, Lord. We pray, God, that you would touch that, that person who stands in need of a touch. Well, Father, we know you are still performing miracles. And, Lord, we know that you have the power to speak a word, Father God, and all sickness must pass on. Father, we know you're able to do all things. And, Lord, we still trust in you, Father God. It doesn't matter what the doctors say, Father, you have the last word. And Lord, we're trusting in you. We pray for our children, our students and administrators, Lord, as they are continuing, Father God, to attempt to educate our children. And, and our children are trying to learn in this difficult time. But Lord, the world is just not the same anymore. But I thank God that you are the same. <laughs> Because you told us in your word that, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we just thank you, God. Then, Master, we pray that you would bless every church assembled in Jesus' name. We pray for every pastor and preacher that will stand to proclaim your good news on this day. And, Lord, we thank you in advance for that sinner that will come. It may not be in this building, but someone, somewhere, will surrender their life to you. And for that, Master, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Lord, we thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, and all you will do. And Lord, we pray that you would just continue to bless Greater Rose of Sharon and help us to be a church found pleasing in your eyesight. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we bless your name. Lord, it's in the matchless name of Jesus, your Christ, we pray and ask it all. Amen and thank you, God. Amen. Why don't you give God a hair clap of praise? Amen. We... Amen. We are going to continue to move a little higher in our service. We're going to have a selection from our praise team. Come on, y'all give them a hand as they come. Amen. Amen.
through. I don't know about you, but I was sitting there thinking as the choir was ministering to us, I done been in some tight spots. I mean, I've been, I've been in some real tight situations that I just didn't know how. I didn't know how I was going to get out of it, but God made a way. Now, I'm not just talking about as a young man. I didn't been in some tight spots since I didn't start preaching, since I've been pastoring. And, but God has a way of always pulling us through. Some, some friends walked away. There are some people, like Pastor Blood used to say, there are some people who want to help you and can't. There are some people that can't help you and won't. So only one you can really depend on is the Lord. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I thank God for Jesus. Because he has always been there. Come on, praise God for him just being God. Amen. I'm Just a few points of emphasis before we worship through giving. Listen. Uh, but those of you who text, call, stop by to help your pastor wish, uh, wish me a happy 48th birthday. Right. We praise God for you. Amen. Thank God for you. Uh, and I understand Brother Lance Tatum's birthday yeah. is today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So y'all, y'all praise God and y'all, y'all tomorrow. Yeah. All right. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to bless him today. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Y'all y'all cash app him some money. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Also, uh, I just wanted to uh, go ahead and put this out there. Uh, second Sunday in February. Uh, Jay, uh, Brittany, y'all get y'all praise dance together. All right? Little cross girls, y'all stretch and get warmed up. All right? I don't know. I don't know what y'all gonna do or how you gonna do it, but just do it on second Sunday. All right, all right. It's been a long time since we've seen the praise team. All right, all right. So second Sunday, second Sunday, y'all come on out and bless us. Amen. Amen. So once again, we thank God for the opportunity to uh, minister to you, to all of those on Facebook Live. God bless you. We thank God for you, and uh, we're going to move a little higher in the service. Amen. And we're going to worship through giving. Come on, if, you, if you're happy to have something to give, you ought to tell the Lord thank you. Amen. At this time, we are in the hands of our usher. What time is it? It's giving time. And God tells us why we should give and how we should give. In Malachi 3 and 10, God tells us to bring the tithe to the storehouse that his house may have meat. Simply put, that means pay your tithes to support the church. And when you support the church, you're not only helping the church, but you're helping others through the church ministries. Not only that, you will be blessed. For God also say in Malachi 3 and 10, that if you give the way he say give, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Don't you want to see the church blessed? Don't you want to be blessed? You can accomplish both by giving. Now to give to this great ministry, simply download the Givelify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create that account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Give Lify app, you can mail your tithes, your offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, 
zip code 72206. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon, Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donations are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying God bless you and keep you is my prayer. You know, I can remember when Sister Jackson had a procedure done, and the doctor said she may not sing again. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. The 
Lord is the one who has the final say so. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, choir, for uh, blessing us on today. Amen. Amen. Come on, get a choir hand. Amen. Father, we come now in Jesus' name. We thank you for all your many blessings. We thank you for watching over us and keeping us. We thank you for the songs. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the praise. But Lord, if lives are going to be changed and souls are going to be saved, the word of God must be preached. And Lord, I pray that you would hide me behind the shadow of Calvary's cross. We pray, Lord, that your word would fall on good ground on this day. And if there be a sinner in the midst or even watching via the internet, we pray that the Spirit of God would convict hearts today and that they would come running seeking salvation. Lord, we thank you for all you've done, doing, and will do. It's in the name of Jesus, your Christ, we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 We give praise and honor to God, his son, who is Jesus the Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, our comforter and our teacher, I'm sure that you would agree with me when I say that it's good to be here. Amen. Amen. And as I often say, someone laid down last night and didn't wake up this morning, uh, but God saw fit to allow you and I uh, the privilege uh, to see yet another day. And for that, we ought to say thank you. Amen. There is a word from the Lord this morning in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 7 down through 13. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. 13. And if you have it, just let it be known by saying amen. amen. And it reads, And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works, Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. I want to talk this morning about a good example of a godly church. Yeah. A good example of a godly church. Let's all say amen. Um, the book that we are reading from is the book of the Revelation. And we have tendency to refer to this book as the book of revelations. Uh, it is not a series of different revelations. It is just one revelation. Yeah. The author of this book is John. 
John has his gospel. He has uh, three epistles, and he also has the book of the Revelation. Amen. This book was authored while he was exiled on the island of Patmos, and John wrote uh, as the Spirit of God um, spoke to him. He was uh, exiled for preaching the word of God. And the Romans sent him off to a place where they thought that he would perish. But yeah. while he was there, he was visited by the Lord and he began to write. Yeah. Uh, one little fun fact about John is that after his exile, he, uh, the Romans thought that that would be the end of it. Uh, but he actually survived and was able to come back off of the island. And uh, John is one of the disciples who did not have a gruesome death yeah. uh, the Lord had uh, used him in a mighty way yeah. and in this book of the revelation this there were letters written to the seven churches that were in Asia Minor uh, there was the church at Ephesus Smyrna Pergamum Thyatira, Sardis, and Laodicea, as well as Philadelphia. Uh, six of the churches were commended for their service, but they also received a rebuke from Christ uh, and were given action steps to take to correct the problem. Uh, but two of the seven churches did not receive a rebuke from the Lord, and one of them was Philadelphia. It was Smyrna and Philadelphia. And we want to look at this text this morning because uh, the past couple of sermons we talked about the church that Jesus builds. Mm -hmm. And we can see there is a church that gives us an example uh, found in the Revelation and that is the church at Philadelphia. Yeah, and this church shows us that it's a church that was faithful and obedient to the word of God and it was a good example. Uh, a church that is focused on Jesus Christ uh, is a good example. A church that follows the lead and direction of the Holy Spirit uh, is a good example. Uh, a church that keeps Christ as the center of all of its ministry and all of its activity yeah. is a good example. A church that is committed to the Great Commission, yeah. reaching lost souls for Christ, right. is a good example. A church that teaches the Bible, Amen. not the newspaper, right. not social media posts. A church that teaches the Bible is a good example. A church that focuses on reaching and growing people for Christ right. is a good example. And this was the character and the nature of the church at Philadelphia. Now this, this was a church that loved Jesus. And they gave their hearts and their minds and their service to Christ. Uh, they they live to be Christ-like mm -hmm. and work to carry out the mission of Christ on earth. That should be our desire as believers, to be more Christ-like and to carry out uh, the mission All right. here on earth. And this church, this church was alive and it was faithful. And as Jesus began to examine the churches in Asia Minor, this church was not given a complaint or a warning. So when you, when you, you read about the seven churches, Jesus went through and he, he began by saying, I know thy works. And letting, letting us know that Christ knows what's going on in his church. Yeah. All right. uh, sometimes the pastor don't know what's going on in the church. But Jesus knows All right. what's going on in his church. And Christ commended the churches. 
that were doing well. But those that he had uh, somewhat of an issue with, he pointed it out to them. But the thing about Philadelphia, this church, Christ didn't have a problem with anything that he found going on in his church. And when we look at this church as a good example, this church had a focus to do what God had called them to do. Their focus was on Christ and being obedient to his word and his will. And I just wonder what the churches would look like today if that was our main goal, uh is simply to be obedient to the word of God and to do God's will. Uh Because in our churches, some churches offer this type of ministry and others focus on that type of ministry, and those things are all well and good. But we can't allow things to get us distracted from and lose sight of the central focus, and that is to reach lost souls for Christ. There's nothing wrong with feeding, Uh because the Bible tells us that we are to to minister to the poor. Uh There's nothing wrong with giving clothes to the homeless. That's Uh all a part of ministry. But let's not be so focused in other areas that we just kind of overlook the fact All right. that we should tell people about the true and living God. Yeah. <laughs> so you can get too wrapped up in the work yes, sir. in working for the Lord All right. and forget about the Lord of the work. You in the house. You in the house. Let me say that again. You can get so wrapped up in working for the Lord yes, sir. that you overlook the Lord of the work. Don't don't miss Sunday school and Bible study because you were out passing out clothes to the homeless. All right. All right. We got plenty of time to give That's to the homeless, but but don't skip Sunday school because you were doing some work for the Lord. Listen, uh-huh. we, we are supposed to spend time in the Word so we can learn more about Him, yeah. learn how to serve. Yeah. If that's the focus, the central focus, then God will be glorified. Listen, He wants us to obey His Word. Yeah. And we can't We don't want to find ourselves thinking that we are working our way into heaven. Because sometimes we like to identify how much work we do for God. Well, listen, salvation don't come by works. (laughs) Salvation is from our faith and belief in Christ Jesus. And we want to tell men, women, boys, and girls that Jesus is still the answer. Yes, sir. And this church in Philadelphia, they were, fo- they were focused on doing that which God had called them to do. Let's look at verse number seven. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that is the key, that hath the key of David. He that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Each letter that was written to uh, the seven churches, the letter was addressed to the angel of the house or the pastor of that particular church. Yeah. And in the verse, in the seventh verse, it says, "These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, mm-hmm. and he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth." We can't be talking about anybody other than yeah, Christ. Yeah. And he gave a commendation. He says, I know thy works. He says, behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man shut it. And when we talk about uh, him having the the key of David, Christ is the one who has the authority to open and close doors. Now, when we talk about the door being open, we want everyone to know that salvation is available to all mankind. He is the one who opens the door. That means that if anyone come through, salvation is assured. And humanity needs to know that it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, what walk of life you come from, what your background, your social status, your race, your creed, your financial situation, uh, 
your lineage, your heritage, it doesn't matter the culture, wherever you come from, when you come through the door, you come to Christ. He has not rejected anyone. Everyone in this room that's saved, we came from somewhere. But when we surrendered our life to the Lord, he has embraced and accepted all of us and counted us as children, and we are part of the family of God. Thank you. That's because he has the authority. That's real. The Bible says right here is that these things say he that is holy, he that is true, he that is the, he hath the key of David, he that openeth, no man can shut it. And he also said, and shutteth, and no man can open. Yeah. So the flip side, he has the authority to open the door. Everyone that comes to Christ is accepted by him. But he also, when he shut the door, no man can open. That means if you have chosen to live this life and choose to reject the offer of eternal life through salvation in Christ Jesus, that door is shut. And no man can open. In other words, if you have chosen to reject Christ Jesus, there will be a day of judgment. And he has the authority. So that means anyone that comes to him for salvation, listen, Christ will save your soul. But for those who have chosen to reject the offer, then judgment will come. And that's not, that's not being a mean God. That's not being an unfair God. Because salvation is there for whomever will take it. The Bible simply says, whosoever will, let him come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And when I, I like to, to just highlight the word whosoever because of the simple fact that covers everyone. Right. Whoever you are, wherever you've done, whatever you've done, wherever you've been, you come to Christ. Yeah. Listen, he says, whosoever come to him shall be saved. But because of the fact that there's only two roads to travel, Amen. if you choose to reject the offer, and see, this is how good God is. He gives us time. Yes, he, does. he gives us time. There are folks who have accepted Jesus Christ on their deathbed. Yeah. Yeah. It makes you wonder what life would have been like if they'd accepted Christ a lot sooner. But even if it's in the last minute, Thank you. Christ said, come on in. Right. <laughs> and he is letting us know in this seventh verse that Christ, he is the one who has the authority. To open the door, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. But then he begins to speak to the church at Philadelphia. He says, I know thy works. In other words, I see what you guys are doing. I know how you're working. I, I, I see that you are, are on the battlefield for the Lord. He says, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word and has not denied my name. It has been said that this church in Philadelphia was a small congregation. That's what the text is referring to when it says, thou hast little strength. And even though it was not a mega church by number, God used this church, and, uh, and we don't have a specific number of the size of the congregation, but God doesn't need a crowd to, his, to get his word out to people. He, it doesn't take a crowd for the work to get done. It, this little church, they kept God's word. It's right there in verse 8. For thou hast little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. Even being in a, in a time, living in a time where Christians were being persecuted on every hand. People were being killed because they chose to follow Christ. Yeah. People were losing their lives. You could put yourself in harm's way to, to openly say you were a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. But even in the midst of persecution, 
it says that they did not deny his name. Now, I want you to ask yourself this question. We are still living in times where Christians are facing persecution. Yes, sir. Now, let's just face the facts. It's pretty easy to be a Christian in the United States. Yeah. It's pretty easy. But go to a foreign country, yes. some place where Christianity is not the religion of choice. Yes. Go to a foreign country where they are opposed to Christianity. Would you still claim Christ as your Lord and Savior? We, we know you do it in Little Rock. But, but what, would you, what would your testimony be overseas somewhere where Christians are thrown in jail, where Christians are, some are still being persecuted and, and locked up in jail right now. There are places you can be arrested for owning a Bible. But see, we, we're kind of comfortable here in, in, in the land in which we live. We don't have those type of problems. We, we, matter of fact, in some places you can be arrested for owning a Bible. We come to church and don't even bring one. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, yeah. you know, that's just kind of how it is now. Yeah. But if what if we were in a place where our testimony for as a, a, as a believer claiming Christ as Lord and Savior would get us locked up, would you still be as open about your faith? You see, you, you never know what may come our way. Yeah. We know the world is a lot different now than it was, you know, some years ago. What, what if they rose up against Christianity right here in this land? How many people would, would cower to society or who would still stand boldly? You need to ask yourself these questions. Because it's, it's easy when you're not facing persecution. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, I asked this question once right here. Where we stand, I said, listen, what if Christianity became illegal? Yeah. Would there be enough evidence <laughs> for you to be charged guilty of being a Christian? Yeah. <laughs> Would there be enough evidence in the way you live, <laughs> the way you carry yourself, yeah. if Christianity became illegal and punishable by law? Would there be enough evidence in your life for you to be found guilty, or would you go free? We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. Reverend Kemper told us we need to let our light so shine before men so that they will see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. We are in a time right now, brothers and sisters, as believers, we have to be bold about Christ. Everybody is bold about everything they believe in. That's right. So why we got to be the one? Yeah. Don't want to make any noise and don't want to upset anybody yeah. and don't want to say anything about this and don't want to say anything about that. Listen, Christ has been too good to us. Too good. Right. He has let us know in his word, if you deny me before me and I will deny you before my father. That's scripture. So if you say you love him and say, say you believe in him, listen, we got to live it. And this church was, Christ gave them a commendation because this church was a good example of how the church should be. This church, they use the open door of evangelism and missions to reach people for Christ. They, they were reaching out, and Christ knew their work. He provided the opportunity, and they took advantage of it. They captured what I call, brothers and sisters, the evangelism moment. What I mean by the evangelism moment, there will be times when you're inter interacting with family, friends, co-workers, uh, and there'll be times where God will kind of create a situation, give you an opportunity for you to witness to a person. That's right. He'll do it. There'll be times where you, you can be talking about sports. You can be talking about what's going on in the job. You can be talking about the kids. You can be talking about what's going on in the news. And God will give you an opportunity to bring his name up. Because if you think about it, when we get to talking with friends and family and you get to talking about, you know, what we used to do back in the day or what's going on with the children or you got the grandchildren coming, you got to talk about all these things. It, there's always an opportunity for you to take advantage of the evangelism moment. What I mean is there's a time where you can plug the Lord in. There's a time to tell him, listen, 
I, I know what you're going through. I've been there, but let me tell you, if it had not been for the Lord, that was on my side. Somebody talking about how bad their kids are. I said, man, listen, you know what? My kids, they bad too. But then I started praying. And in time, I started to see changes happen. <laughs> You can be talking about sports. They're like, man, you know, Brady retired after 22 years. Yeah, man, Brady was good, man. But the Lord kept him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you, you can plug Jesus in anywhere. Yeah. We have to take advantage of the evangelism moment. Yeah. And when we think about this church, they, they, it says that, it says, for thou hast little strength and hast kept my word. And has not denied my name. This this church, they didn't have unlimited resources. You know, sometimes, you know, you've got churches who have huge budgets. And they can do just about whatever they want to do because yeah. they have the means. But sometimes the budget don't allow you to do as much as you would like to do. Well, yeah. listen, that's when you make the best of what you, with what you have. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's when you make some sacrifice. That's when you, that's when you go to your closet and grab those coats and stuff that you ain't wearing and go and give them to somebody who could use them. That, that's right. you, you make the best of what you have. Ministry requires sacrifice. Yes, Ministry requires us of going maybe a little further than we would like to. Right. Uh, Ministry requires us, when, when we go to the grocery store, we got a whole list of what we want to buy for our house, but you know someone who's less fortunate, go ahead and get something that you yeah. want to share. That, that's how we minister to people. All right. yeah. You see, ministry is not just preaching and teaching. Right. I, yeah. Listen, I just help somebody. Yeah. Ministry is not just preaching and teaching. Yeah. All right. listen, you, listen, there are ways you can reach people for Christ. And the way ministry works is that you may not be able to, at the place where you can share the plan of salvation and someone's soul be stirred and they accept Christ on the spot. All right. But you can take the time mm -hmm. to show a random act of kindness. Yes. And through consistent ministry, Rome was not built in a day. Through consistent ministry, there are people who you are in the process of reaching. Mm -hmm. And they may not say yes to the Lord for another 10 years, but you're continuing to let your light shine. All right. You're continuing to minister to them. Listen, some, there are some people who accepted the Lord, and whether they realize it or not, it was a seed planted when they were a, ch a child. There was a Sunday school teacher, youth director, the uh, somebody in the church when you were 10 years old who started ministering to you. And you didn't accept Christ until you were in your 30s. But somebody started a long time ago. Uh -huh. And that's just how ministry works. We have to, and the reason the ball gets dropped is because we're trying to see results. Uh -huh. We say, well, you know, I've been talking to this brother. He ain't made a move yet, so it probably ain't no hope for him. But it's not up to us. We just do the work and leave the results up to him. Yes, sir. Charles Stanley said, you obey God and leave the results to him. So if we just will be found like this church in Philadelphia, they love God and they were found doing the work. And listen, God is the one who has the impact on a person's heart. Brothers and sisters, you and I cannot save anyone. No matter how fervent you pray, no matter how knowledgeable of the scriptures you are, you can't talk to a person and you can't save them. You, you, can, you can introduce them to Christ. You yeah. can witness to them, but you can't save them. As a matter of fact, the flip side of that is you can't send anybody to hell either. <laughs> you know, know sometimes we get mad and say that, but we, you know, we, we, we can't do it. You can't save them and you can't condemn them. It is all up to the Lord, and it's up to us as believers to be obedient to his word. It says, Thou hast little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. They did not deny the name of Christ. Verse number 9 says, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Now, when we look at this verse, 
The synagogue of Satan refers to the Jews who said that they followed the true God, but they really didn't. Now, if you think back to uh, the sermon I preached concerning the wheat and the tares, the wheat and the tares, they looked exactly the same. Yes. They had the same characteristics. That's why Jesus said you let the wheat and the tare grow together. And they said that he is the one who will do the separate. So say, there are some people in church who they look like Christian, they act yeah. like Christian, they know the church language, but their hearts have not been changed. All right. And Christ is letting us know, listen, there are those who are not being true, but you can't decide who's true and who's not. And he says, concerning the wheat and the tares, he says, I'll do the separating. And he says in verse 9, behold, I make them of the synagogue of Satan. Those who have evil hearts and follow the enemy. He says, which, they, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. And when I think of that, it takes me to what Paul says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. He says, therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus... Every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And when you tie those verses together, brothers and sisters, listen, there's going to come a day where every person is going to bow before the Lord. And when I think about that, as long as I've read that and studied the word of God, it still amazes me that Christ is suggesting what Paul is, 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 is saying in Philippians. He says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That means everyone following the false doctrine, everyone under some type of cult, everyone who has rejected Christ, there's going to come a time where everyone will bow to Jesus. Amen. Now, they may not have accepted him, yeah. but when you look up and see that what you thought was a myth is the truth. Yeah. See, we'll, we're going to reach a point where we will no longer be able to deny it. We've heard that he was the conquering king. We've heard that he was the righteous one. But when you look up and see him, that's the day that every knee will bow. And it's not going to be a glorious occasion for those who have rejected the offer. Right. Because when the king comes, and he's coming back, yeah. matter of fact, we ought to be living every day with expectancy because there's nothing that's keeping him from returning today. All right. But one day Jesus is coming, and the, Paul is saying to the Philippian church, that at the name of Jesus, every knee of those in heaven, those on, on the earth, and those under the earth. Listen, that covers everybody. That means everyone that's here, everyone that's gone on, and even the angels in heaven. When Jesus show up, everybody will bow to him. Christ is letting us know that even those Jews... In this church, in Philadelphia, it says that they were, the, they were in the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. There's going to come a day where everyone will bow before the name of Christ. Yes. This church was a good example. They did not deny Christ's name. They kept Christ the central focus. Yeah. They focused on Jesus and reaching lost souls for Christ. And that gives every church a good example to follow. Now, when we look at, we think about Paul before he was converted to Saul. Still looking at verse number nine. Saul was one who tried to destroy the church. Yeah. But when he met the Lord on the Damascus Road, yes. the same one who tried to destroy the gospel 
ended up preaching the gospel. Yeah. So we can see in real time what the Lord is saying in verse 9. He says, listen, he says, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. So you, we see what he's saying in verse 9, but when you think back to the Paul's conversion, here's one who, he was a troublemaker for the church. But when God got his heart, he became a champion for Christ. And just know, brothers and sisters, there is no person who is beyond the hand reach of God. Yeah. The meanest person you know can be saved. The hardest yeah. person you know can be saved. The most stubborn person can be saved. Yeah. When God, listen, there are people who we just can't reach. Let me say this also. Everyone is not your ministry. Yeah. Right. Let me say that again. Right. Yeah. Everyone is not your ministry. Yeah. And what I mean by that, even though you have a desire to witness and share the good news, there are some people you just ain't going to reach. Yeah. There is somebody I can talk to and, listen, I could talk, talk, and talk and never get through to them. And one of you could say something to them and they get it. Yeah. There's somebody you can talk to. You've been preaching to them, talking to them, and it just seems like it's going in one end out the other. I talk to them and they get it. Yeah. Why? Because everyone is not your ministry. Yeah. Right. Right. And when Paul... Talk, listen, there are some people, the Lord is the only one. Yeah. Listen, it took a dramatic incident on the Damascus Road to yeah. get Saul's heart. You couldn't preach to Saul because he wasn't hearing. It took the Lord to intervene to get someone like Saul. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, some of us, listen, some of us, the Lord had to intervene. <laughs> Big Mama been talking to us. Mom and dad had been talking to us, and then it took something to happen. Yeah. And, uh, and if you think about it, sometimes it takes the Lord to intervene and do something to get your attention. And I think most of us have had at least one experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That took us to, to the place where we called on the Lord like we never called on him before. Yeah. That time you thought you were out having a good time. <laughs> and you drank just entirely too much. Yeah. Got yourself sick. Yeah. And you just could not, you couldn't stop. What we used to call early. Yeah. <laughs> and you called on the Lord. Listen, yeah. you did not have a prayer life before then. Yeah. But it took something to happen. All right. Now you're calling on the Lord like never before. God has a way of doing things to get you to the prayer meeting. Listen, Big Mama been telling you what time prayer meeting started. You never went, so then yeah. God just had to call a prayer meeting, yeah. just you and yes, him. Sir. He will do things yeah. just to get your attention. Yes, and this church at Philadelphia, they remained faithful to God. Uh -huh. And brothers and sisters, you and I, we in the middle of a pandemic, the numbers of members are down. Yeah. We're not seeing church the way we once saw it. Mm -hmm. But we have to continue to be faithful to God, even in the midst of trying times. Yeah. We have to understand that there is a blessed hope in trusting in God. Yeah. Things are different. Yes, they are. Are there people that we haven't seen in a while? Absolutely. Are there some we might not see again? That is true. But the truth of the matter is, the church must continue on. Yeah, man. And the church at Philadelphia, gives us a good example, yeah. even in the midst of persecution, yeah. even though it wasn't a large congregation, yes, sir. even though they didn't have the largest budget to minister to the, to the community, yeah. they did what they could. They kept Christ first, yeah. and they reached lost for, souls for Christ. Yeah. Church, that's all we're trying to do, yeah. is reach lost souls for Christ. Yeah. Listen, church is different. Yeah. Do I miss a full congregation? Absolutely. Do I miss seeing all of the people and fellowshipping and being able to shake hands and hug yeah. like we once did? Yes, though. Those days may not come back. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So as long as, and I'm getting ready to close, as long as he is faithful to his word, and we yeah. know he is, and I'll reiterate the point that I did last week and a few weeks prior. It may not be a lot of people joining Greater Rose of Sharon. 
But because the church is not the church building, the church is believers all over the planet. If anybody accepts Christ, wherever they are, then the church is growing. If anybody accepts Christ on the other side of town or in another state, if they accept Christ and they become a part of the church, we ought to be praising God for it. Yeah, man. When we extend the invitation right here, I always say, you're welcome at Greater Rosa Sharon. Yeah. But if not, get yourself in a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching right. church yeah. where you can grow and serve the Lord. Yeah. You see, listen, if we're more concerned about the kingdom of God, yeah. then we are the the specific place where we worship. Yeah. If we're concerned about the kingdom, listen, we spread the good news and share the gospel and share Christ with people. And if the Lord send them to our church, praise God. But yeah. if not, still praise God. Yeah. Listen, this is a good example of a church, of a godly church. The church at Philadelphia, they were obedient to the word of God. They didn't have a Christ didn't have a complaint towards them. This was a church that uh, was small in number, but they did what God had called them to do. Yeah. Yeah. And because of their obedience to the word of God, this congregation was blessed. The community where this church existed was blessed. And Christ commended them for their good work. Church, we want to be a church that Christ commends yeah. for good work. We're not perfect people. We all got issues. Yeah. But if our desire is to please God and do the will of God, yeah. then God will get the glory out of our lives. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. <clears throat> <clears throat> Father, we come now in Jesus' name at the close of the message. Lord, we pray, Master, that you would look into our hearts. We know that you know our works. Yeah. We pray, God, that you would help us in this walk of life to be bold, bold enough to reach out to that man, woman, boy, girl who doesn't know you due to the pardon of their sins. And then, God, we pray for the, the work that we do, yeah. that it would be pleasing in your eyesight. We pray, God, that you would use us to at least begin the process of helping someone to get to know you as their personal Lord and Savior. Lord, we know that you saved our soul. And there was someone who started it with us. Lord, help us to do the same thing. And even that person who seems to be hard to reach, we know you can reach them. So, Lord, we just thank you for the privilege to call you our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And we pray for the opportunity to be a witness and share our faith with someone. Let us, let us seize the opportunity. Take advantage of the evangelist moment. Yeah. Let us know when should we open our mouth and speak well of you. Yeah. Give us that opportunity, Lord. In our hearts, Lord, we want to see that lost person saved. But Satan has tricked some of us to be fearful and not want to say anything. But Lord, we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So Lord, we thank you today. We pray for greater roles of sharing in every church assembled in Jesus' name. And we'll be mindful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. At this time, we extend the invitation. There may be one here who does not know the Lord due to the pardon of your sins. There may be one who uh, is already saved, but you've kind of been out of fellowship with God. There may be one who stands in the need of prayer. Uh, Jesus said, my house should be called a house of prayer. You can come uh, by letter, Christian experience, or a candidate for baptism. All the Lord wants you to do is come. May there be one today.
there be another today. Sister, give me that last name again. Chapman. Amen. Amen. Sister Chapman is not a stranger to Rose of Sharon. She's been coming around for a little while. Amen. Tell you what, Sister Cross, if you would, you and Sister Chapman, if y'all would uh, go to your office, uh, get our information, uh, and, and we will move forward from there. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Praise God for Sister Chapman. Amen. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold up. She said she came for prayer. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we come now in Jesus' name. We come now to intercede for Sister Chapman on today. Master, we know that you are able to do all things but fail. And Lord, whatever it is that is taking place in our sister's life, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would bless. We pray that you would heal. We pray that you would deliver. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we have all been at a place in life where we just needed to call on you. And Lord, we don't need to know the details of what's taking place in her life because we know that you already know. So, Lord, we're asking, Father God. We're only asking because you told us that we're good. So, Fa Father, we pray that you would touch this sister right now, whatever it is that she is dealing with, Father. We pray that you would fix it for her, and we pray that you would be glorified in all that she does. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity, and we pray, Lord God, that you would just bless in a mighty way. Lord, we love you, and we thank you in advance for the breakthrough that will come. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Happening on the day. Amen. Thank you, deacons. Uh, pandemic, due to the pandemic, we handled the invitation a little differently. Amen. So we, uh, Sister Cross is going to uh, 
get Sister Chapman's information. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for the word on today. Yeah. Amen. Come on, praise God for the word. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We thank God that there's a, a good example of a godly church in Greater Rose. We want to be a good example. Amen. I see Deacon Parker standing here, so there must be something. Praise God. Thank you, Deacon. All right. For God be the glory. Amen. Thank you, Greater Rosa Sheridan. Amen. You all are some kind people. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for uh, those who may have uh, tuned in via the internet for the first time and then our visitors today. We praise God for you. You're welcome at Greater Rose at any time. Amen. So if nothing else calls our attention, uh, Jade, y'all got y'all instructions? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll get you to something. I'll get you something. Amen. Amen. Nothing else. Let's all stay. <laughs> Father, we come now to close of this worship hour. We thank you. We praise you. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you uh, for being within our midst. We pray, Heavenly Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, you give us traveling grace. We pray that you would continue to watch over us and keep us, lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that you would have us to go. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We bless your name. And Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory. And Lord, as we make ready to depart, Lord, we just pray, Father God, for boldness to be a witness and tell others about a true and living God. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And we bless your name, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> We see none have come, but there's plenty of good room in my father's house. What time is it? It's giving time. And God tells us why we should give and how we should give. In Malachi 3 and 10, God tells us to bring the tithes to the storehouse, that his house may have meat. Simply put, that means pay your tithes to support the church. And when you support the church, you're not only helping the church, but you're helping others through the church ministries. Not only that, you will be blessed. For God also say in Malachi 3 and 10, that if you give the way he say give, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you won't have room enough to receive. Don't you want to see the church blessed? Don't you want to be blessed? You can accomplish both by giving. Now to give to this great ministry, simply download the GiveLify app. That's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. 
Again, that's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. Go ahead and create that account. Enter the place of worship. Enter the amount you wish to give. Enter that credit card and billing information. Tap that Give Now button and smile when you do it because God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you do not wish to use the Give the Fire app, you can mail your tithes, your offering, or any donation to Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. Again, that's Greater Rosa Sharon Missionary Baptist Church, 2823 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Little Rock, Arkansas, zip code 72206. And remember, Greater Rosa Sharon is a 501c3 charitable organization. All your tithes, all your offering, all your donation are tax deductible. Until the next time, this is Deacon Duffy saying God bless you and keep you is my prayer. <laughs>